Okay, welcome everyone here tonight to our Lent service tonight. We're blessed to have Pastor Wednesday with us here again this evening. And so the songs we're going to sing, we'll just, we're going to sing them on a cappella. So pick something you kind of know, and uh, we'll do the best we can on that. So, okay, great God. Thank you, Pastor. <clears throat> Pastor Bob got yeah, this announcement on here that the next last service will be a service. And I guess we're discarding these numbers, right? Yes. Yeah. So whatever you want to. I guess the first one is in Christ in the cross of Christ and glory. Is there something else you would rather sing? I do better Acapulco. Okay, which one is it? 104. In the 104? 104. Okay. Are we ready?
I'll be reading from the <coughs> uh, New Living Translation. Uh, we had a uh, speaker for a special meeting uh, a year or so ago, and, and he <coughs> had a good suggestion where we uh, bought copies of this for everyone who wanted them, and we've been reading through the Bible in a year, and we're going through the second time this year, so I'm preaching and all of our Bible studies we're doing out of this version. Beginning at the 51st uh, verse. Then the others grabbed Jesus and arrested him. But one of the men that Jesus pulled out his sword and struck the high priest's slave, slashing off his ear. Put away your sword, Jesus told him. Those who use the sword will die by the sword. Don't you realize that I could ask my father for thousands of angels to protect us, and he would send them instantly? But if I did, how would the scriptures be fulfilled that describe what must happen now? Here ends the scriptures. <clears throat> Let's turn to the Lord of Prayer. Dear Lord, we pray that you would be here tonight. <clears throat> um, my words, my thoughts are just ashes, just dust. Only you can bring things to life. And I pray that you would bring uh, your word to life for us tonight. And any thoughts that, that we have, any words that I speak, I pray it would be to your honor and glory. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. And we ask this in the precious and powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. <coughs> As you know, this Lenten season, we're <clears throat> looking at less known witnesses to the passion. Ordinary people like us that just happen to be there and get drawn into it. I'm wondering, have you ever had a special day or night in your life that you will never forget? Well, maybe it's uh, <clears throat> when you got married. Maybe it, uh, when the child was born, uh, maybe it was a graduation night. Uh, could be any number of things. For me, it was a night when I was 16, and the Lord spoke to me through a youth gospel theme and told me to give my life to Him. And that was the beginning of my life for me. My life has had meaning since then. Before that, it was seeking meaning. What was a special time that you remember? You know, what is it that you always look back to? <clears throat> Tonight we're going to look at Malchus, a slave who was in the Garden of Gethsemane when uh, Jesus was arrested. That was the evening that caused Malchus to be noticed. Uh, that brought him out of the darkness of what kind of the shadows of life and into the light of scriptures. Um, many people in the garden that night, we don't know anything about. We never see them, we never realize who they were. But Malchus kind of steps out of the darkness and into the light that night. There were five facts that made that evening the most important of all for Malchus. First of all, it was a dark time for him. In John, <coughs> excuse me, 18, parallel passage to this, it says, after saying these things, Jesus crossed the Kidron Valley with his disciples and entered the grove of olive trees. Judas, the betrayer, knew this place 
because Jesus had often gone there with his disciples. The leading priests and Pharisees had given Judas a contingent of Roman soldiers and temple guards to accompany him. Now with, <clears throat> excuse me, now with blazing torches, lanterns, and weapons, they arrived at the olive grove. It was a dark time physically because it was nighttime. And uh, I don't know how many street lights you have in uh, England here, but uh, there are a whole lot more than we were in the Garden of Gethsemane that night. It was just pitch black, I'm sure. And uh, they had to bring lanterns and torches to light their way. If we had been there, we would have had to have flashlights and, and some kind of light. So it was a really dark time. It was a really dark time in, in Malthus' life. He was a slave. He was under someone else's control. Someone else made all the decisions in his life. Someone else determined what his work was. You know, you, we can get up during the end of the morning probably and say, well, what am I going to do today? What do I need to do? You know, if you're a farmer, you know there are different tasks that you need to do, but you can choose which one you're going to do. Uh, housewife can choose what she wants to do. Uh, but what if you, when you got up, someone said, okay, this is what you're going to do. And you have no choice. Uh, the master determined his daily schedule. You know, you're going to do this by this time, this at this time, and so forth. This is when you're going to eat, and this is what you're going to eat. Uh, kind of like someone dictating your diet to you. Those are fun. But everything was determined by his owner. That's not a good time. And it was a dark experience that he was involved in that night. The arrest of Jesus. Jesus was as popular, righteous, miracle-working man of God, and to arrest him, well, that was an act that just couldn't bear the light of day. Um, the public couldn't witness that because they thought so highly of him. So it had to be done in the dark. All the way around, it was a dark time for Malchus. Maybe this is a dark time in your life. Could be for a lot of different reasons. You know, maybe grief. Maybe you've lost someone close to you recently. Um, before uh, Christmas, there were three people in my life that had been <coughs> influential that uh, uh, died. And um, just hard to deal with those empty spots, isn't it? When they become important to you, and then they're gone all of a sudden. Or, or maybe there's a darkness in your life because of troubles. Maybe there's some particular troubles you're going through. I got to get going on taxes. I don't know if that's anything you have to worry about. It's, it's not the pain of that is the problem. It's a figuring them out. Or getting ready for someone to figure them out. Or maybe it's depression. Or maybe disappointment. Or discouragement. I think now this can be an encouragement to us because a dark time can be a very important time for us. It was for him. Secondly, Malchus had no control over his situation. He did not choose to be a part of Jesus' arrest that night. It was not a situation of his own choosing. He was not there by his own choice. It was his master's choice. In 
Mark 14, another parallel passage. We read, Then the others grabbed Jesus and arrested him. But one of the men, when Jesus uh, pulled out his sword and struck the high priest's slave, slashing off his ear. So he was the slave of the high priest. He had absolutely no choice about being there. The high priest had sent him on this mission. And maybe you feel like you're not in control of the situation you're in right now. But that doesn't mean that it can't be an important day or an important time in your life. It was also God's choice for Malchus. And I think Malchus came to see that eventually. In Romans 8.28, <clears throat> You can probably quote that by heart. Uh, but we read, and we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. So God makes everything work together for good. And the Lord wanted Malchus to be there that night. We come to like a verse in Psalm 119 uh, that became special to me when my uh, wife passed away. It says in the second half of verse 91, for everything serves your plans. Or other versions say, everything is your servant. So God uses everything to serve him, even our dark times, even our times when we have no control, even our losses, even difficult situations. He can use them to accomplish his will. Thirdly, Malchus met Jesus that night. That's another reason that was an important night. <clears throat> I'm sure he, he had heard about Jesus and all his miraculous works. And all the people who heard about him and needed healing or, or wanted to hear him, they could travel to, to uh, see him and hear him. But Malchus didn't have that opportunity. He probably never expected to meet Jesus personally. Now, as a slave, he didn't get out much. Uh, he didn't have a life of his own. As we say, you don't get a life or whatever. He couldn't. He didn't have a life of his own. And he wouldn't have had, to be, had a chance to meet Jesus any other way than if his master hadn't told him to. And God hadn't arranged it so that he could. But God arranged it so that Malchus would meet Jesus at the time of his arrest. And Malchus wasn't just part of the faceless crowd that night. God allowed Malchus to meet Jesus face to face by letting Peter cut off his ear with a sword. What a brutal way to meet him. But that put Malchus into the limelight. And in that passage in John 18, it says, <clears throat> And Peter drew a sword and slashed off the right ear of Malchus, the high priest's slave, but Jesus said to Peter, put away, put your sword back into its sheath. Should, shall I not drink from the cup of suffering that the Father has given me? He 
gets Jesus' attention that night because of what Peter did to him. How did you happen to meet Jesus in your life? You know, what were the circumstances that made it possible? Remember the occasion that led up to that night uh, that I heard the Lord speaking to me. Um, we had a youth gospel team come to Fergus where I grew up and, and uh, I had become part of a uh, youth gospel team even before I knew the Lord and didn't know him. They thought I knew him, but so they asked me to be a part of this and it was between our two churches and, and the pastor of the other church uh, invited me to come for this weekend that they had with this, this youth team. And so I came and spent the day uh, playing games and stuff with them and everything. But if I had said no to him back 56 years ago, um, I might never have met Jesus. Uh, my church, uh, though it was a former Lutheran Free Church, didn't really talk about personal relationships with Christ. I never heard about that until that time. So I don't know if I would have come to know him However you happen to meet Jesus, be thankful for it. Because God is the one who put it together. God chose each of us to be his special treasure. And uh, that only happens as we meet Jesus and begin to walk with him. Fourthly, Jesus met Malchus's need that night. This wasn't just a casual meeting with Jesus. You know, sometimes uh, we hear Jesus speaking to us maybe through reading the word or through a sermon in church, and we just kind of brush it off as unimportant. Something that we can take or leave. No, it's not, not crucial. But Malchus had a real need that night. In Luke <clears throat> 22, and you see in the parallel passage, when the other disciples saw and what was about to happen, they exclaimed, Lord, should we fight? We brought the swords. And one of them struck at the high priest's uh, slave, slashing off his right ear. But Jesus said, no more of that. And he touched the man's ear and healed him. His ear had been cut off, and he's bleeding, and he's in pain. There's no ambulance around to take him to the hospital to stitch it back on again or anything. Jesus touches him and heals him and restores the ear. That's a minor thing in the passion story. Uh, hardly even worth a footnote. Boy, it was a major thing in Malchus's life. Because he was a slave and no one cared about him or cared for him. But Jesus cared for him. And Jesus touched him and he made him whole. And he would never forget that. And Jesus can meet our needs, whatever they are. And it may not be important to others what our need is, but it's important to us. It's important to you. And it's important to Jesus. And I invite you to take it to him tonight, whatever your need is. And finally, Malchus found his identity that night. How do we know Malchus's name? It's very unusual for 
a slave to be referred to by name. They were just property, they weren't persons. How would John or any of Jesus' followers know who he was, that he was the slave of the high priest or, or to know his name? He was just part of that unfriendly mob that came to arrest the master. They could only have known his name because he told them. And he couldn't have told them that night because they all ran away. Rather, it was later. Malchus had to have become part of the Christian fellowship. He found his identity that night who he really was. He wasn't just a slave. He was a member of Jesus' family by faith. He found his identity in Jesus. He was created and loved by God, and he was saved by Jesus' suffering and sacrificial death for him. As he came to see that, he became part of the fellowship, and so they knew his name. He was one of them. Have you found who you are meant to be? You are meant to be a member of Jesus' family, of all else, whatever else you are. You're to be a member of his royal family. You're to be his special treasure. And the evening that caused Malchus, an unknown slave, to become noticed has these five parts. It was a dark time for him. Jesus can come to us in dark times. And he had no control over the situation. But he met Jesus that night. And Jesus met his need. And Malchus found his identity in Jesus. And you found your identity in Jesus. So Lord, we thank you for the story of Malchus because he was extremely unimportant except for what you did for him. Lord, we are extremely unimportant in the whole scheme of life in the affairs of this world. But thank you that you care about us. Thank you that we are important to you that you want us as your special treasure to be part of your family. Tonight I pray that you would give us that faith, that trust in you to meet our needs, to take us someday out of this life into your heavenly kingdom. Thank you that you love us as much as you did help us. Help us to let you show us that. In Jesus' name, amen. in the hour of trial. In the hour of trial, Jesus plead for me, lest I may denial, I depart from thee. When thou seest me waver, with a look recall, nor from fear or favor suffer me to fall. With forbidden pleasures, should this same world charm, or its sordid treasures. 
beneath the cross of Jesus. Okay, 107. Beneath 
Oh. Uh-huh. 